All right, so I'm uh, doing a few little repair projects on the old Smith Corona. Um, one thing I didn't get film of was as it was when I got it. I, uh, I shot a lot of video. I ended up throwing it all away because I wasn't happy with it. Um, but I did some videos on cleaning the basic exterior and interior of the typewriter. If I find it, I'll, I'll upload it, but I thought you guys might appreciate something a little different on my channel. Um, I've actually been wanting one of these for a very long time, and I finally bought one. Um, I got this thing for a song and dance, really. 20 bucks. And it's fully functional. Relatively. Took the ribbon out. It has the original Smith ribbon spool in there. Not sure if it's the original ribbon, but it is trashed. It's actually been exposed to some moisture. I went to Staples and I couldn't find a typewriter ribbon, but I did find this. This is a calculator ribbon and it actually is the exact same thickness. I'll get at least use that to get it working and then if I get it going again I'll um, get a real ribbon. Now as for cleaning, I'm going to explore some gentle methods because this is the original paint and it's in beautiful condition. I don't want to mess that up. Let's look down into the, into the bed here. Every key works. Um, don't know how the tab key works. It does have a bell. Another f f uh, problem I found is that this little ratchet unit doesn't go down automatically, so it'll work once, but it won't work again. Unless you press it down a little bit and do it again. Ding. Anyway, it started acting up on me, and uh, what was happening was I would type a letter, and the ribbon the ribbon carrier would hang in the top position. So it would just sit there. And um, I just went ahead and took it apart. And I took off the ribbon guides. They were pretty caked up in all sorts of wonderful nastiness. So I figured while I'm here, I might as well remove the platen. So I'm going to undo two of these screws and it should just pop right out. It's in really good shape. It's not cracked or swollen or dried up or anything. So I'm going to wash it off, get all of the um, tobacco, nicotine stain. Whoever owned this at one point was a heavy smoker. So let's gotta try to get this plate off. And I want to clean up some of these chrome pieces. You can see the chrome is actually starting to craze in some areas, which is just an unfortunate aspect of reality. So here we go. So removing the plate in was about as easy as it gets. Um, I now have access to this tray down here and all that filth. I really wish I had better light in my house, but it seems like when I need it, it's not there. Anyway, got my steel wool there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just spray this down with a little bit of Windex. I found that in a lot of experimenting of cleaning various things over the years, Windex is unbelievably good at removing nicotine stains um, from a lot of things, and uh, looks like the platen was pretty clean. I think I had already cleaned it by hand and did a fairly decent job. I'm also going to clean the shaft ends with steel wool and WD-40 and the end of the roller. But this platen is, is hard, but it's still there. Um, and it's not really in rough shape at all. It's not gouged, it's not scratched, but it is hardened, so it's not as malleable as it once was. But anyway, there's that. I'm going to continue on trying to clean up some other stuff in here. Um, 
I don't know how to remove the platen. I've I am gonna clean those rollers too. I think this might come off. It looks like it's just held in by gravity. I think this comes off. Let's see. Do some playing around here. See what I can do. Now this is interesting. This is the um the ruler, and you'll notice it has a slight bluish haze to it. That is actually part of the heat treatment process, and that you don't want to remove. But there is a little bit of light rust on it, and we're going to clean that up with WD-40 and steel wool. Um, let's see how that goes. Certainly better. Um, it actually looks pretty good. I mean, you don't want to go too far into it, because it is that heat treated finish that actually prevented it from rusting out in the first place. So let's try to keep that in good shape. Um, it looks like the ratcheting mechanism and the preload have started to malfunction to the point where it no longer Seems to be hanging up, um, which I can't seem to demonstrate in this video for some reason, but trust me, it's doing it. So I've got a little bit of more work to do. Okay, here we go. We're back inside the typewriter. Um, it's a little intimidating when you first get a good look at this stuff, but really isn't that bad. I mean, it's kind of a just a machine. Anyway. Um, how this works is when a key is pressed, you can see that the key lever strikes that plate right there, which then connects to this linkage here, which is adjustable. Okay, and then that linkage, which is spring loaded, um, it actually goes up. There's an escapement up here, a toothed wheel, and that little thingamabob, rocker or whatever, uh, releases one of the teeth from the escapement. Okay, so when we're tabbing westward, tabbing, let's get it, uh, um, we're advancing it, and then when we roll it back, those teeth. ratchet back into place. Now what keeps this all under tension is this device right here. This is a spring loaded um, spool and uh, I'm trying to figure out just why the mechanism is so flaky all of a sudden. It's like it's not like right now it should be advancing but it's not. There we go. And you can see that little rope right there, that flat shoelace looking thing, rolling around that drum. That shoelace wraps around here and connects to the carriage at this point. Now, if I were to press this lever over, ooh, like that, Theoretically, <laughs> actually, no. <clears throat> I guess I hadn't figured it all out, had I? Have I? Somehow, you can you can release the preload. Somehow, this is just not right, man. All right, there's a lot of crap caked up in there, which is something I'd like to clean, but to do that would be nearly impossible I think but as you say nothing is impossible I guess I just don't know how to work in a typewriter I mean it's something that they don't really teach in American schools anymore <laughs> how to fix a typewriter 101 and what not to do there's very little information out there for this kind of work um, there's a little bit out there but it's not really thorough you know what I mean 
Okay, so where am I going to go from here? I don't know. Obviously, I've got some gunk built up somewhere. It probably happened during my first cleaning spree when I used WD-40 improperly. And uh, I tried to spray a few things down to get it to work. And I got it to work. I succeeded. Oh, yes, did I ever succeed. But I didn't do this in a manner that could be, you know, long-lasting. Still not sure how this works entirely. I do believe this is spring-loaded. I know it is. Uh, I'm just not really so certain on how to give it more or less tension. This wheel appears to be made... Oh, it's steel. Yeah, that's steel. At first I thought it was a fiber wheel or something. It's not a fiber. I'm afraid to pull any more of this apart because I don't know what I'm going to break in the process. I've never, I've never been like this on, on any machines that I've worked on over the years. It's just so unfamiliar to me, you know what I mean? Alright. Okay. So I can cheat the system by going like that. And this tells me that there's not really a problem necessarily in this mechanism. It seems to be working okay. You know, it's doing its job and doing it well. So that's probably not the issue. So I'll have to keep investigating. Well, even more things are missing now. Hehe. <laughs> I got this off, which I will now spray down with WD-40 and give it a good steel wooling. And that'll make these uh, paper guides slide a little better. Here's one way you can tell whether or not this is a 37 or a 38 model. Um, these paper guides on the 37, the first year of production, were like this. On the 38 model, the uh, paper guide was a bar, like a more modern typewriter would have. Um, they made that change, from what I can tell, fairly quickly after they began production of this model typewriter. And it was a pretty clear-cut improvement. Now we can see a little bit further into the mechanism. And we now have access to these rollers, and we should be able to clean those up pretty nicely. Um, you should probably look at the camera while I'm filming. Um, there's a lot of dust and dirt buildup back here. It just looks bad. But it's all fixable. It can be cleaned, and it will be. So, um, without taking the entire carriage off. Yeah. One of the great things about going to the dentist is getting those free toothbrushes that suck so bad you'd never put them on your teeth. But they're great cleaning things and brushing off dust and debris, especially in tight areas like these old typewriter key bars. Look at that. Probably get a little bit in here. Make that all nice and pretty. Alright, now we're cooking. And compressed air, of course, would be indispensable here. But I don't have an air compressor, and uh, I'm not full of enough air to make that, uh, you know, yeah. That kind of an impact with my own... Look how dirty that thing is. My God. This thing's trashed. Try to get up in here. Say, ah. Uh, you. I really would like to get this off. What I've found is to get this apart, I've got to loosen up the screws that hold this roller bar in place. But to do that, I, I kind of have to start removing stuff that I don't want to remove. Um, I wish it were easier, I really do. Um, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, 
Okay. Well, that just makes it even more inaccessible, but at least we're onto something. Or on something. I don't know which. Still, pain in the ass. Maybe if I take this lever off, it'll go into a higher position. Well, friends, that was the smartest thing I've ever done. I got exactly what I wanted. Got all the rollers to pop out of place. And with any luck, I'll be able to get them back there again. Nice. So, next step is undo a couple of screws. I'm going to get these rollers off. I'm going to be able to clean this plate. I'll be able to clean underneath. Life is good. Okay, and here's what I just learned. You have to remove these two plates that actually sit over top of those two bars. They're clamping plates. And what those do is it allow you to remove this bar here. Once that bar is removed, if I can get it done evenly without bending anything, it's easier said than done apparently. But once those bars are removed, you have full access to the um, to the rollers. You can pull them out, clean them, and uh, and uh, yeah. So let's try a little bit of finessing here without breaking anything. Oh God! Look at what I've done. I've stripped this carriage down to its bare essentials. And I uh, got this all apart. And it's looking pretty good. Don't lose these. I hope I can figure out how they go back on. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's interesting to note the L.C. Smith Company was actually a gun manufacturer before it got into the typewriter business. And that is why they have a lot of um, a lot of case hardened steel parts. They use some of their gun manufacturing techniques in their typewriter manufacturing and design. So probably why these damn things still work because they were built so well that they almost never wore out. I mean. And anything that could that broke on a typewriter could be fixed or replaced. So they're pretty much a machine that will out, easily outlast anything ever made. And that is the manual typewriter. The electronic ones, not so much. But these old manual ones, you just couldn't kill them. And they had men and women in the typewriter repair and maintenance industry. It was a big business back then. And uh, that is the precursor to the computer technician field, um, which is going away in a certain way and being replaced with something else, who knows what. But anyway. You would have people traveling, you know, to school districts, to offices, etc., fixing and maintaining typewriters. And this is the kind of stuff that they would do. They would pull the carriage apart, oil it, <sighs> and clean it up, you know. And they would make the old machines run like new again. So yeah, this is going to be fun. Alright, so it seems to work okay. It's a little stiff. Um, I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to watch when you watch me uh, roll it back and forth here. Kind of noisy in some areas. I can hear some bearing noise. Um, the whole unit rides on steel ball bearings. We're going to put a little bit of oil in the upper and lower tracks to get those 
bearings good and coated. Now oil does attract dust. Um, this is a fairly lightweight oil. I don't anticipate a lot of problems with this. But these tracks have been dry for so long that they really need something to lubricate them. So I'm going to just put the camera down again here. Try to get it out of the way of the carriage. That's a little better. That's a lot better actually. And I get it rolled back and forth a few times to get everything worked in. We've got some very dry bearings here. Now at this point, it wouldn't be too difficult to remove the carriage. But at this point in time, I just don't see a reason to do so. so as long as that thing you know, does its job, we're okay. I'm going to also put some lubrication in the ratchet mechanism or the escapement mechanism, I shouldn't call it. What it really is, it's an escapement. Just like a, um, just like a clock. And we're gonna just brush away some of this dust. This is not a museum piece by any, I'm actually planning on using this, this typewriter, which is why I'm not going too crazy with it. I've actually found a use for it. Anytime you're mailed a form that you have to fill out, oh, these are great. <laughs> These are so great for that. For my next trick, I'm going to clean up the stage a little bit. Or not the stage, but the, uh, the tight bar basket. If you notice, it's kind of scrungy looking. And what I'm going to do is pull each key, or each tight bar at a time, and I'm going to clean them with some steel wool. And uh, that'll make them look nice and beautiful. Hopefully you can see the difference uh, between the cleaned ones and the dirty ones. Clean, dirty. Clean. Clean. Not cleaned. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and... Uh, leave these alone for now. Um, I just want to get the unit back together again so that I know I can do it and then I'll clean the rest of these as I have time. This is a very time-consuming project and I don't want to wind up with a half-assembled typewriter and parts strewn all over the house. So I'll just give this one final clean up before I start reassembling. Um, one of the things I'm doing is I, these rollers are independent. They actually float on a brass shaft. Here's the one that I cleaned. And I've taken the rollers off, polished the shaft, give it a light coating of machine oil, and reassemble it. This came out beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm very happy with that. Um, so now I need to start reassembling these pieces. You know what I ought to do is... See, this is a good example of a, um, of a tempered finish. I believe this is blued. Um, that's something that prevents... It's all part of the heat treatment process of the metal. And it prevents rust. It's a nice job of it, too. All right. So overall, we're okay, I think. See, one of the things I don't like about steel wool is that it tends to flake off as you're cleaning things, and you get little bits of steel wool everywhere. And I mean, that'll come off with some air, some compressed air. It'll take it right off, but still, it's something I don't want to don't want to deal with right now. That could have been bad, by the way. <laughs> it could have damaged the key. Um, but anyway, it just gets messy real quick. And uh, one of the reasons I don't feel like cleaning it all up right now. Looks like each type bar is held in by a 
flat screw. And man, I, I just can't imagine working in a factory building one of these things. I mean, God, the amount of work, the amount of people that it must have taken to assemble this in an assembly line process. It, it just boggles my mind. But they did it in America years and years and years ago. So while I'm working on all this other stuff, I decided to take a little detour and reassemble the ribbon guide. And what's happening is this is sticking, which was the reason for this demolition to begin with. So what we're going to do is make a minor adjustment here. We're going to try to center this ribbon guide as best we can. It needs to be, get this thing focused. You'll notice when I loosen these two screws, the whole assembly can be moved from side to side. So I'm going to try to just kind of eyeball it. See how that moves freely now? It was that easy. Let's kind of tighten this up. I'm going to put the camera down and we'll get it tightened up and centered. All right, well, all the hard stuff is pretty much done. Um, rollers are in place. A little bit of oil on the shaft to give them a nice free run. Carriage is well lubricated. The um, guide is, oops, ribbon guide is or the stage, I think they actually come out is nice and oiled. Doesn't stick anymore. Um, these are all in place. I put a little bit of grease on those uh, little rocker things down there. This is all cleaned up. I've got to take this apart, kind of, sort of, and do something with lubrication and clean up and all that. That's pretty much all that needs. Um, that's hooked up. Good. I'm going to start cleaning these bars once I uh, get more of this done. Once I have it working, then I'll start doing stuff like that. Um, spools are okay. I don't need to do anything there. Keys are cleaned. I already cleaned those couple of weeks ago. All right. Well, it's just beginning to look a lot like a typewriter. Um, and it goes ding. Nice. So that was fairly easy. I mean, when you really think about how it all goes together, you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. Another thing is you want to make sure you don't have any extra screws when you're done. That is a no-no. Uh, of course, I don't need to tell you guys that, you know. Um, in a case like this, anything extra means you screwed up. And uh, I'm keeping a close eye on what I'm taking off and what I'm putting on. Because I don't want any extra parts. Especially on this. Um, now, it's the time we get to put the roller on. I think I applied a little bit of oil to that roller right there, just so that it, look at how smoothly that moves now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're getting to the point where things are starting to get buttoned up. Um, just a few more things I gotta screw in place and nail down. I've cleaned up my rulers. Um, I have to get new feet. Not the rubber, the, the rubber feet are all there, but they're dried out, so it slides. What I'm going to do is get some rubber, sheets of rubber, and cut it out to the shape of the pad and glue it in place. That's my plan. Okay, so now we got the plate and back in. Look at how nice that thing spins. Looks like the shaft is slightly bent. But, oh my lord. And what's... Woo! And this, this sounds a lot cleaner. It used to be clunk, clunk, clunk. Now it's dee, 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 dee. Look at that. So 
that not the best sounding clicker you've ever heard? You can almost play music on it. Anyway, uh, engage the rollers. That works smoothly. It doesn't... It seems to be a hair trigger now, but whatever. That's, that's great. That's great. I'm happy with that. So I got to start putting the rulers back on and she should be ready to go. Okay, well, so far, everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab a sheet of paper. We'll give it a try. So, I've already set my paper guides. Except for this one. And, uh, let me make sure we got this thing in frame. Okay, good. It looks like it's working alright. I did a quick test on it, and, um, so here we go. Um, I have it set to red. I'll put it back to black here. I'll zoom in so you can read what I wrote. And we'll probably write a few more things, do some more tests, test all the keys. What the hell, right? All right, so let's do two, four, six, six, six seven, eight, nine, zero. Now, it's doing this again where I press the shift key. And it seems to be skipping a space. But it only does that sporadically. I'm not really sure why that is. It's not doing it. Oh, there it goes. There's something going on there. An adjustment. Could probably be corrected. Um, I know it used to do it on the question mark, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to do it on that key either. It's working fine. But let's try my app. It's working all right. Um, I'll put it on shift lock, and we'll do the same thing. Oop, I jammed her right there. Nope. Maybe. Oh, I know why it's doing it. Because I'm act. Okay. I think it's because I mistakenly hit an adjacent key. So that could be, we'll chalk it up to that, so maybe it's just fine. I um, check the tab, stop, that's working fine. Okay, good. Everything looks pretty damn good. Um, oh, the typewriter shifted over substantially. <laughs> so I'm going to continue cleaning these type bars um, when I have some free time. But for now, I'm just going to clean up my mess, and, uh, which now extends from my living room to my kitchen. And that is a mess. Uh, probably one of the worst messes I've ever made here. And then I got... Oh my god, what a disaster. So yeah, i got to feed these guys too. They're probably getting kind of anxious. Where is Leela? Usually she's up here. There she is. So I've got to clean up my counter, put my kitchen back together, and enjoy this typewriter, which is um, functioning quite well. As I said, this is sounding pretty good. Everything, all the action is nice and smooth. 
everything is smooth and functional just the way I like it so I still have to put the back cover back on but that's that's a quick and easy job but anyway hope you guys have enjoyed this little project I started and uh, I think I'm done with it now so until then